بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيد ابن آدم أجمعين محمد بن عبد الله الهاشم القرشي وعلى آله وصحبه رضوان الله تعالى عليه مجمعين ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحمد لله we continue at the halfway point the 15th night with the 15th chapter of the Quran we ask Allah Rabbul Alameen that he accept from us all that has come and proceeded prior to this point and that he bless us to complete this month in a way that we have no regrets and that Allah Azza wa Jal is fully pleased with us Allahumma Ameen so tonight for the 15th chapter we have Al-Hijr Al-Hijr and this chapter has 99 verses and it takes its name from the word Al-Hijr اسم الوادي الذي كانت تسكنه قبيلة ثمود وهم قوم صالح عليه السلام so it takes its name from this valley this area that the people of Thamud used to live in and Thamud were the people that Salih Prophet Salih alayhi salatu salam that he was basically sent to his people سبب تسميتها why is it named Al-Hijr we're told انفراد الصورة بذكر مفردة Al-Hijr because this word Al-Hijr is only mentioned in this chapter and therefore because it is a unique word only mentioned in this chapter it has taken on this name as well as وَوَصْفُ قَوْمِ ثَمُودَ بِأَنَّهُمْ أَصْحَابُ الْحِجْرِ excuse me as well as Allah Ta'ala naming Thamud's people as the people of Al-Hijr naming them, ascribing them to the land that they basically lived in we don't know of any other names for this chapter besides Al-Hijr as far as its main objective we're told بَيَانُ عَاقِبَةِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ بِنِعْمِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَفِي مُقَدِّمَّتِهَا نِعْمَةُ إِرْسَالِ الرُّسُلِ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّلَامِ so we're told that the main objective is that Allah Rabbul Alameen declares the consequence for those who reject, who disbelieve and who are ungrateful to Allah Rabbul Alameen's blessings and gifts upon them and perhaps the greatest of them is the sending of prophets to them, of messengers to them for their guidance and for their deliverance. We don't have, uh, as far as the, the, the reason that the chapter is revealed, it is a Meccan surah and we don't have anything that authentically tells us why the chapter or even some of its verses were revealed. As far as its merits and virtues, it is from the surahs that begins with Alif Lam Ra, so therefore it takes on the same meanings of it being from those chapters that the Messenger والسلام, advised that man to read three of those chapters, so it is given special mention. The relationship of the chapter, the way that it begins, from the way that it concludes, we're told مناسبة أول الحجر بآخرها الحديث عن شبهة الجنون وغيرها وتوجيه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في شأنها That for the most part it's all about addressing the the specious arguments that the disbelievers had with regards to the Prophet and the false accusations against him that he was insane, that he was possessed and Allah Rabbul Alameen directing the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on how to address each of those different arguments, each of those different um, slanders of what were basically uh, accused, uh, he was accused of each of those accusations. فَقَالَ فِي فَاتِحَتِهَا وَقَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الذِّكْرُ إِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ So for example in the beginning Allah Rabbul Alameen says and they say O oh, you who has received this remembrance, this, this mention, this revelation you are certainly majnoon, that you are insane, you are not with it, you know um, that you're even possessed. وَقَالَ فِي خَاتِمَتِهَا وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ 
وسبح بحمد ربك وكن من الساجدين. And he concludes in the end saying, And we certainly know that you are stressed, that you are troubled by what they say. So declare the perfection of your Lord and praise and thank Him and be from those who prostrate. Right? And be from those who prostrate. So they accuse Him and Allah is addressing the Messenger والسلام, acknowledging that He is hurt by their statements and He's giving Him the solution, the medicine, the spiritual medicine which is to His devotion to Allah Rabbul Alameen to pray to praise and thank and glorify Allah as well as to pray and sajda being of course one of the most beautiful parts of the salah itself that you are at the epitome of humbleness and devotion to Allah as you prostrate yourself to the ground declaring my Lord the Most High is perfect. So subhanAllah this is how we see the connection between the beginning and the end. Well what about this chapter with regards to Ibrahim which preceded it? We're told اختتمت اختتمت سورة إبراهيم عليه السلام بقوله هذا بلاغ للناس ولينذروا به. That Allah رب العالمين concluded سورة إبراهيم saying this is a proclamation for people for all of the people so that they are warned by it. فكان القرآن مما ينذر به في مفتتح الحجر فقال ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب وقرآن مبين. So we're told that the Quran itself is from what Allah رب العالمين is mentioning as being that warner, beginning this the chapter this chapter of Al-Hijr saying ألف لام را. These are verses of the book and the Quran which is um, clear, which is a clarifier, which explains, which details. So Allah Ta'ala concluded Ibrahim mentioning that what was mentioned in that chapter is a, a, a proclamation for humanity to be forewarned and then he begins this chapter explaining that the Qur'an as a whole is going to be there, that it's going to, uh, as a whole, that it serves to clarify, to elucidate, to make that warning crystal clear so that this way nobody will have any reason to say or any justifiable evidence or excuse to say, I didn't know any better, I thought, I didn't understand, or who knows what. The Qur'an, as the final revelation, Allah Rabbul Alameen has gone into great detail. His last communication for humanity is perfect. It is a miracle that continues to be. And for those who read it and are truly seeking guidance, Allah Rabbul Alameen will guide them. For those who don't want guidance, even if they read it, it'll only further increase them in their transgressions. And this is what we see having happened throughout the course of history. And Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from ever being from those who are ever led astray by the devil or by the arguments that people may have. Rather, we beg him that he always bless us to be from those who take to heart what there is of guidance and that we are also forewarned forewarned of what he mentions of different sins so that we do not fall into them, that we do not give in to them. And in doing so, we will truly be from those who take heed. And in taking heed, we will be from those of his worshippers that will have, alhamdulillah, been blessed to be delivered into his guidance and be delivered into paradise safely, bi'ithnillah, by Allah's blessings without anything of damage or harm. And we beg him Jalla wa'ala that he bless us in this month of Ramadan as we know that every single night lahu utaqa'u min nar that every night he saves and spares worshippers from going to hell and we beg him that he bless us to be from them Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad